In 2001, the Taliban swept through Afghanistan's Bamiyan Valley. Their target was Bamiyan's colossal stone Buddha statues, which had stood for over 1,500 years. The world watched powerless as one of its true wonders was lost. The savage destruction of this World Heritage Site shocked the world. But can it be restored to its former glory? The Taliban had been arguing for months about whether or not to destroy the Buddhas. The leadership was split. Taliban chief Mullah Omar respected the statues as a part of his country's heritage. But Taliban hardliners, linked to Al-Qaeda, wanted them gone. There was an earlier commander who was beseeching me. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is to go in there and blow up the Buddhas. And uh, Mullah Omar, you know, said, hey, that's not the way we behaved. Finally, the hardliners said, OK, if you're not with us, that means you're against us, which means, you know. The Buddha's fate had been decided. Mullah Omar lost his leadership position completely because this was 180 degree away from the edicts that he had been saying. His voice no longer came. Foreign governments pleaded with the Taliban to save the statues. But the hardliners went ahead with their show of power. When they destroyed the Buddhas, I was a refugee in Pakistan. I saw the picture of the ruined Buddha for the first time in a newspaper. I felt so much sorrow in my heart, and I thought that all the history and the culture and the art of the people of Afghanistan was suddenly lost with the destruction of that Buddha. Using a mixture of cannons and explosives, it took the Taliban four full days to destroy the statues. Mirza Hussain was one of a dozen local men forced at gunpoint to help with the destruction. They lowered us with a rope to dig holes in the body of the Buddha. We were so scared, as well as sad. Scared because we thought that they will either cut the rope and drop us down to die, or that they'd leave us hanging there to be killed by the explosion. And we were sad because the Buddhas are our historical heritage, not only for Bamiyan, but something extraordinary for all the world. And we were being forced to destroy it. But the Buddha statues belong to another Afghanistan, a country once prosperous and powerful, at the heart of the ancient silk trading route. The statues were just a small part of the Bamiyan site. There's a labyrinth of caves where thousands of monks once lived and worshipped. Wide-eyed early travellers wrote of its beauty and colourful splendour. The walls of the caves were lined with carvings and intricate mural paintings. What remained of it, the Taliban destroyed too. They left behind a form of artwork of their own by throwing their shoes at the walls to destroy the paintings. It's hard to see this as anything other than an act of cultural vandalism. But for the people of Bamiyan, it robbed them of their greatest resource. But since the defeat of the Taliban in 2001, there's been peace here in the Bamiyan Valley. And with that peace comes optimism and some big plans for the future. And they start right here on this site. Nazir Modabar is the head of historical monuments in Bamiyan province. A former refugee in Pakistan, he returned to his native Afghanistan after the Taliban fell. Now he's coordinating the attempt to restore the Buddha site. Why is it so important to the Afghan people today to save these paintings? Because of uh, its history. 
1,800 years ago, it shows Afghan people was very civilized people. So if we not preserve and we not protect, it means we lose our history, our culture, our art. In 2003, the area was declared a United Nations World Heritage Site. An international team made up of experts from Germany, Italy, Japan and Afghanistan are working together on the restoration. Incredibly, despite the fact the giant statues were blown into oblivion, the Afghan government's ultimate aim is to one day rebuild them. Georgios Tabekis is charged with salvaging what is left of the once 50 meter high Buddha. We are here collecting the fragments, the remains of the uh, large Buddha figures. Here after the explosion, some pieces have fallen down almost 40 meters. The explosion itself turned everything upside down. So the finding position does not reveal anything if the piece really belongs to the left or the right side of the figure. It's painstakingly slow work and it's risky. It is dangerous, so you have to be careful. Uh, in the rubble itself, ammunition, uh, shells, um, therefore we have a deminer working on the side. Once his sonar makes a sound, uh, he has to check if it's just an ordinary piece of metal or it's something dangerous. Tobekis' team have recovered thousands of fragments of different sizes, over 200 tons of them. If the statues were to be recreated, then every piece, however tiny, is a crucial find. And the pieces have revealed some hidden secrets about how the Buddhists originally built the statues. They finished the rock carving, and in order to make the plaster uh, grab on the surface, they made these holes, put these sticks inside, and now what happened then? They took these kind of strings, these two kind of strings, which then were put on top of these pieces. So by that means they could control the fold, the line of the fold. Because on top of these then they could apply the plaster and here we have a nice example of one of these original folds of the garment of the figure. So this is, this is the Buddha's clothes? You can say, exactly. The Hindu Kush mountains of the Bamiyan Valley have repelled many invaders over the years. The signs of war are so common here, they are part of the architecture, and not only from the Taliban. In the 1970s, it was the Soviets, before that, the British, and in centuries past, warriors like Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. For generations, the Hazara people who live here have made their home in and around the Buddha site. Fierce, proud and industrious, they are believed by some to be the direct descendants of Genghis Khan's Mongol army. But this historic tribe were viciously persecuted under Taliban rule. When the Taliban came, we escaped towards Baba Mountain. We had bare heads and bare feet and hungry stomachs in those cold mountains. They took our harvest and killed our men. Those were our darkest days. I saw people running away in all directions. I asked the people why, and they said the Taliban were about to enter the city. Whoever they caught, they killed. No one was spared. As soon as my husband went outside, he was shot and killed on the spot. We ran away and left his dead body. My son was also killed. I think for the local people, uh, this valley is something like the heartland of their identity. And therefore, the destruction of the figures was also, of course, an attack on their identity, on their way of living, on everything that was important to them. And for many local people, the post-Taliban healing can't begin until the giant Buddha, that symbol of their homeland, rises out of the mountains once more. We want the Buddhas of Bamiyan to be rebuilt. We really want this because it's a unique thing in the world. 
and it'll bring lots of tourists back to Afghanistan. <laughs> Habiba Sarabi is Bamiyan's governor. She is leading the rebuilding call. Even though she estimates it could cost up to $50 million, money the Afghan central government doesn't have, she insists it would be both the economic and psychological boost her people need. This is one of my desire, one of my dream, because the people of Bamiyan uh, wish and uh, like to have uh, to, to see the, the Buddha to be built again. But others are appalled by the idea of trying to recreate something it took the Buddhists almost a century to build. There are several groups that want to recreate either physically or by lasers or by all these things that we have, I think this would be a grave mistake because um, <laughs> anything that we recreate now, it's going to look like Disneyland in, in the Hindu Kush mountains. We cannot recreate, you cannot recreate. But the stumps that are there are, are very poignant. And the spirit is still there. I don't think we need it. I, I, I'm, I'm one of those who are against trying to rebuild the figures. And even some of the key team working on the site believe war-torn Afghanistan should have other priorities. If you ask me about rebuilding, I can understand, of course, this question because almost everybody who passes by um, is asking the same question. And then I, ask, I tell them, just turn around and have a look at the landscape here, have a look around to the situation this country is, have a look around and ask yourself what is first to be rebuilt. <laughs>